Welcome to Beyond Death, where we examine near-death experiences from people who say they died, visited the other side, and came back. Today's NDE comes from Jay, who describes going through a tunnel as an orb of light and having an in-depth conversation with an angel about why souls choose to come to Earth. Let's get into it. Beyond Death I just found your channel through a friend sending me a link. She had heard me talk about my own NDE which happened many years back, and noticed some similarities that she wanted me to see. As I sat there listening to not only the link she sent me, but several more after that, it was as if listening to other people's experiences had finally validated what I myself had spent decades trying to invalidate. Just knowing other people have visited the other side as well lets me know that I did not dream my experience, which was the one conclusion I have always semi-believed. In fact, I was so sure it had only been a dream that I rarely spoke of it to anyone save a few select close friends, the woman who sent me your link being one of those. My experience happened right after I turned 30 years old. My mother had passed on the day before, and since I had no siblings or even other close family members, arranging her funeral fell to me. I was completely unprepared for how stressful things had suddenly become. My dear mother had raised me alone which being the single mother back in those days was very taboo. It just wasn't done. In fact, her parents had wanted her to go away until after I was born at which time I was to be placed up for adoption, so she could return home. It was a different time I guess. Needless to say, she ran away and had me, got a job as a waitress, and did her best to keep me safe, clothed, and fed until I was grown. When I turned 28 she was diagnosed with cancer, and when I was 30 she was dead. I had to learn how to arrange a funeral on my own so that's what I did all day, and at night I laid in bed worrying about how I was going to pay for it all. Throw in one huge heaping side of grief, and I was a complete mess. I laid down the night after my mother had died and began to cry myself to sleep. Somewhere through my tears, I did fall asleep only to wake up later that night with an intense pain in my chest. I stumbled out of bed and tried to make my way to the medicine cabinet in the bathroom to see if there was anything I could take that would ease the pain. I remember falling to the floor and trying to drag myself back up into the bed. That is when I lost consciousness. The next time my eyes opened I was hovering above my body. At first I just looked at my body laying there with a look of pain on the face. I didn't feel any kind of connection to that body anymore. I was neither sad nor sympathetic for it. I think some part of me realized right then that this body we use while alive was always meant to die. It is no different than an outfit we try on only to discard later when we no longer need it. Looking around I saw a tunnel had appeared right in the air above the door that led into the hallway that would have led me to the bathroom had I made it that far. I don't know if I went into the tunnel or if it pulled me in, but the next thing I knew I was zipping right along at a fairly fast pace that kept increasing. After a bit I saw that other tunnels had began to merge with my own tunnel, like on ramps to the freeway. Out of these on ramps I saw other beings like myself and took notice that we were nothing more than glowing white orbs of light, all moving in the same direction, towards a light in the distance. I was now fully aware, and by that I mean I suddenly knew all the secrets to the universe. I don't know where this knowledge came from, I just know that I now comprehended high-level mathematics, advanced sciences, and all the history that had ever existed. I was aware the light was my destination, and I was also aware that the light was home. It is where I had been created and where I had departed from when I chose to come to Earth, and now it was where I was heading back to. I was also aware that most every emotion I possessed on Earth had fallen away like a snake shedding skin it no longer had use for. I no longer had any anger, no jealousy, no animosity. I could only feel love now. Even the pain of losing my earthly mother was gone. Upon reaching the light which I knew as source, the love I was feeling began to fill me like a balloon, and just when I thought I could not hold any more love, it continued filling me. I don't know how long I was at the light. It could have been five minutes or five hundred years. Time no longer had any meaning here, and as I strived to find the answer for why that was, the answer was suddenly clear to me. 
the light was more than source. It was eternity, and it was infinite, and nothing that is eternal and infinite has need for time. Time is merely a human illusion that we create for ourselves while on earth, the one place where we are neither eternal nor infinite. I moved into the light, bonding with it, and allowing more of my infinite self to become the light. I could sense a million other orbs of light doing the same as I was. With almost no warning I was yanked back from the light and found myself in a room that was large, empty, and as white as white could be. Every shade of white on earth pales in comparison. I saw neither doors nor windows, nor did I see walls or ceilings. I could not tell where this room started and where it ended. I remember wanting only to go back and rejoin the light. The light was my home and I wanted to go home. I have no idea how long I was in this room because it was another infinite space in which time had no meaning. I did not have any hunger nor did I thirst. I was just there. I occupied myself by first trying to locate a wall and later by working math equations calculating everything under the sun. Finally, an angel appeared in front of me. He was maybe nine feet tall with broad shoulders and a white gown that hung loosely. It was tied at the waist by a golden belt. The angel smiled at me before asking, You again? His simple two-word question completely caught me off guard. What do you mean me again? I asked. You were here once before and chose to go back to Earth, he replied. Now I was really lost because I knew I had never been here before. Oh, I remembered being created and signing a contract that gave me permission to go to Earth, and I remembered dying and I remembered being here now, but I did not understand anything at all about his claim that I was here before. You must have chosen to forget last time when you made your decision to go back, he stated. If I was here before, why did I choose to go back, I asked. Souls that are bound for Earth are forced to forget being here the first time they choose to go, because Earth is the hardest of all the universes and dimensions. If a soul opts to make a return trip because they did not accomplish what they wished to, they can then retain or not retain the memory of here when they rejoin their body. That didn't answer my question. I stated before asking again, why did I choose to go back? You have free will. You alone control where you go and why you go there. No soul is forced to ever leave here, so I cannot tell you what your reasoning was, only that you chose to go and then to go back. So what will it be this time? The angel asked. How can I choose when I don't even know why I went in the first place, much less why I would have chosen to return to Earth a second time? When I said that, the angel produced the contract I had signed, which stated what my goals were while on Earth. Looking them over, I knew I had failed to complete them all. Holding that document, I now remembered requesting to go to Earth, and I vaguely remembered asking to go back. I had simply chosen to return to Earth unaware, because I felt that it would be easier to accomplish the tasks I had set for myself if I did not know I was away from my true home. The only way I can describe what makes a soul request Earth is, it is akin to being a soldier right here. You don't want to go to war, but for many it is a badge of honor. Well, a life on Earth, in which a soul achieves their goals is like that. Anyone can join the military, but only a select few may say I survived the toughest place they could throw at me. I instantly knew I wanted to try again. I wanted to return to Earth. This time I chose to do it with my memory of home still intact. That is not to say I was allowed to keep knowing the secrets to the universe, but I was still aware the light existed and that I was part of it. I awoke on my floor in a body that no longer seemed to fit just right. You never realize how big your soul is until it is outside of the body and then placed back inside. My chest pains were gone now, however, something worse replaced it. The grief seemed triple as I no longer longed only for my mother to still be alive. I longed for the light as well. I sunk into a depression unlike any I had ever known. I couldn't eat, sleep, and could barely function. I don't know how long the depression lasted, but it did eventually fade and I began to think maybe I had just dreamed everything I saw in the afterlife. I told several friends over the years as a way of gauging their reactions, and depending on what they thought I too leaned that direction. Some have told me it was a dream and others told me I must have hit my head when I fell which caused me to hallucinate it all. 
Only one friend has ever stated it was a near-death experience, and when I scoffed she sent me your link. I am now convinced that what I saw was real which gives me comfort knowing my mother moved on to such a wonderful place as what awaits us all. I do wish I had experienced a life review while I was there though as it may have been helpful in completing my tasks I have given myself. I somewhat remember what I am trying to experience while here however, they are not something I want to discuss with the world. They are obstacles for me to face and overcome by myself. Well I done turned this email into a dang book, but I wanted to be sure I got as many details down as I could remember. The conversation between the angel and myself was telepathic of course, I left that out I think. It was also paraphrased from the memories that are now decades old so take the exact wording with a grain of salt. Blessings on you and yours. J. Notes from Beyond Death. Thank you very much for allowing me to post your near-death experience on the channel, J. Now before anyone starts, remember the channel's rules, be respectful. If you wish to say that you believe he dreamed it, that's fine. However, if you are that person that has to say this NDE doesn't mention Jesus so it has to be fake, go ahead and ban yourself now. I will not tolerate disrespect towards anyone that took their time to put their experience in writing for you to hear. I don't care how much scripture you can quote to me, if you can't give love and respect to a fellow human being then you are not living a Christian life. Until next time, stay blessed.